Wednesday night tailgate, where the spotlight is always on the positive. Tune in Thursday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time to hear your favorite NFL legends, players, and coaches sharing their stories. Now back to Chris and Bob. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happened to you tonight. Now back in making his 11th appearance with us here is former Steelers Pro Bowl linebacker LeVon Kirkland. Let me remind you a little bit about LeVon's background. He's from Lamar, South Carolina, played his college ball at Clemson, where he was a consensus All-American in 1991. He is also a member of their All-Century team and was inducted into their Hall of Fame back in 2001. He was also inducted into the state of South Carolina's Athletic Hall of Fame in 2008. He was a second-round draft pick in 1992 by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he played in the NFL from 92 to 2002, all but those last two seasons with the Steelers. He spent one year each in Seattle and Philadelphia. He was selected for the Pro Bowl in back-to-back years in 1996 and 97. He was the Steelers' team MVP in 1998 and 99, and was also named to the NFL's All-Decade team for the 1990s. Last year, he was inducted into the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, he is in our guest Hall of Fame, and he was recently uh, named vice president of the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, and we are very thrilled that he is back with us again tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, LeVon, Chris, and Bob, happy Super Bowl week. How Welcome are you, back, my friend? LeVon. Hello, Chris and Bob. How are you guys doing today? Uh, we're Great. fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you, LeVon. Yeah, so, no LeVon, problem. congratulations on the new role as vice president of the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame. How did that come about? You know, um, it's always something that I've always envisioned myself doing, which is making a difference through football. Um, basically, it, it was a God thing. You know, David Watts, who's um, a head of Watts um, uh, Sports Management, had me in mind to help them do some fundraising and um uh, they simply asked me, and I, I took a look at it and said, hey, man, this is what I always wanted to do. So I jumped at the um, opportunity. So what's your role? What's your role there day-to-day now? You know, basically, uh, I'm kind of the face of <laughs> of the um, Hall of Fame. I do a lot of, uh, you know, branding and marketing. Uh, you've probably seen some stuff on Facebook or Twitter. Also, uh, yeah. I'm one of the major of uh, uh, fundraisers, so uh, I'm doing a lot of that, getting a lot of contact with a lot of great people, and, and basically, uh, our goal is to make a uh, to build a museum learning center, which is going to house not only the uh, inductees of the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame, but it's going to be uh, an avenue for young people. It's going to be also a place to house and uh, and really just entertain uh, some of the other uh, entities in South Carolina. So we're looking really forward to what the future holds. LeVon, switching gears a little bit, I, I want to get your reaction to your Clemson Tigers winning the national championship, having done so now two of the last three years. So it's, it seems like, you know, every year people are talking about how to beat Alabama and Alabama being, you know, the, the one that everyone is talking about. But, boy, it sure seems like Clemson needs to be the team everybody's talking about now. Talk about your, the big win for your alma mater. Uh, it was a huge win. Uh, it was a win that I think really uh, puts a stake in the ground. For, uh, I'm sorry for Clemson football. Wow. Yeah. It, um, I think it really took the Oh, I'm tired. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. Uh, we're talking about the Clemson University National Championship. And this really, I think, really. Uh, set the bar for our university and, uh, and what we're all about. Dabo's done a tremendous job with the team and, and there's a certain culture there that really represents family, faith, and really helping these young men be incredible men when they leave the university. And 
you can really tell. And I mean, to beat Alabama in the fashion that we beat Alabama, that's a wild factor. I, I think that gets everybody's attention. And I thought it was amazing. And we, we played true freshman. True freshman had a big part in what we did. So, uh, the future is bright at Clemson. And I, I really believe that, um, we're, we're going to be the team to be. We're going to be the, we're going to be the Alabama in the next few years. Levon, I got to get your thoughts on what's going on with the Steelers. And we were talking about this with JT Thomas at the top of the show. I never would have guessed that the Steelers would be a team with so much drama going on. What needs to change with the Steelers? Uh, you know, I, it, it is surprising because when you think about it, this first deal, you think about class, you think about uh, a team that's always a contender to win the Super Bowl, and you think about the Brady family and what they represent. Um, I, I, it's, it's really hard to fathom what's going on and the, the kind of lost control of the locker room. And uh, I, I think Tomlin is a, a great coach. I really do. Uh, I've been around him. I've been through their camps, and uh, he was the kind of guy that I wanted to play for. Um, you know, I think sometimes when we're football players, we get a little bit too much into our own heads and we forget uh, about you know, it's a team sport, it's an ultimate team sport. And we kind of think about ourselves and, it, you know, it's just so unfortunate that a team as talented as the Pittsburgh Steelers wasn't in the playoffs. I think they could have really made a major difference or, you know, being in the Super Bowl this year. But I goes to tell you, man, you know, t- team chemistry goes a long way. And you can tell they were just not quite in sync this year. There was always some rumblings going on. I don't know what really needs to change. I, I think that people have to get together, and uh, I, I think that it needs to be some serious talk because, uh, you know, you, you don't want to get a, get rid of someone who's, you know, as talented as uh, the Pittsburgh Chiller has. And uh, it, it's something that it has to be worked out. If not worked out, then you have to part ways and – just going a different direction. But it, it, it's sad to see, you know, uh, it go down the way it went down. Can you envision that, that they could have a, a sort of a meeting with, with it, you know, Antonio Brown and, and Ben Roethlisberger and, and Tomlin and Kevin Colbert? I mean, it just a, sort of a, a come together and say, you know, hey, can, we, can this be worked out? And then figure out at, at the course of the end of that conversation whether they move forward with Antonio Brown or make a trade. Does that sort of stuff actually yeah. go on where they, where they have that stuff, uh, go, have those kind of conversations? I think when there are players like that that's involved, when you're talking about all time greats, then there's, there's probably some conversation going on. It, you're not, you don't want to get rid of those two players. You know, you don't want to really part ways because I mean, on the field, they're dynamic. And I think if you're a GM or uh president, owner, you, you want to work that situation out because those are two valuable players that are still very, very good that you don't want to lose at this point in time. So, um, you know, some egos going to have to be set aside for this to work out. If not, you know, it's just going to, you know, it's going to be something that we're going to look down the line and say, man, what a shame. Five questions for Levon. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on, Levon, and a uh, belated Thank Happy you. New Year to you. And uh, Thank you know, you. we had talked in the past, Levon, about how you were the recipient of some great coaching. And I look back even at your rookie year and, of course, Cower being the head coach. But then again, on the defensive side, you have Dom Capers, you have Dick LeBeau, Marvin Lewis, and others. If those guys weren't there in your indoctrination into the league, Levon, do you think you would have been the player that you really became? Uh, totally, totally not. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I think that's a, I, th- I think that's a part of it. You know, I, I was, I was very fortunate to be a part of a great team with a young coaching staff with some innovative uh, coaches that not only knew the game, but 
believe in me as a player because I, I never played the inside position before um, I got there. And they had patience with me. And um, I, I think Marvin did a great job as far as, as coaching me, uh, really making sure I, I paid attention to detail, technique was really important. And, you know, being a young man and, you know, like I think when you're in college a little bit, you're kind of talked down to, especially back in those days. It was really refreshing to have coaches like Dom Capers and Dick LeBeau who treated you like a, uh, like a man. That, you know, um, they didn't yell at you. They just kind of correct you. They just instruct you. And I, I really enjoyed that. And I, I love the pace of football we played. And defense was a premium with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So it was a lot of fun. But uh, I think if, that coaching staff wasn't in place. Uh, it might have turned out different. It might have turned out better. Who knows? But it turned out pretty well. So those coaches I owe a lot to. And, LeBron, how about comparing the linebacker position for us right now as opposed to it when you played? You've been out of the league for about 16 years. For First and foremost, they seem to throw the ball a lot more, but any other things that come to mind? Uh, the linebacking position now as opposed to maybe 20 years ago? Well, yeah, I think the game is a little different. It's, play, it's played out of space a lot more. So you're not going to get a lot of big guys like myself that are really playing that position because you got to be able to run. you got to be able to uh, play man-to-man. But you also, also got to stop the run. So I think that that position is a combination now of guys who have really great speed and good enough size. I, now, I was probably unique uh, um, during my time as a player, but I, I think now you're looking for guys who have uh, high motors, can run side to side, and, you know, these guys got to be very smart nowadays. So if you're looking for that lateral movement, you're looking for a guy who doesn't mind contact, Good tackler, very good um, cover guy. So I, I don't know if that position is a traditional position that it was before. Maybe you bring safeties down the line, you know, from the safety position up to linebacker. But I think sometimes you run into a little danger with that because they could be a little lighter. So you, I think you're ideally looking for a guy who's 240 that can, can move side to side who's willing to go downhill and attack the run because teams are still running the ball. They're just running it from uh, – they're running a formation that looks like it's a pass formation. But they're doing a lot of nice – they're doing a nice job of one more dressing. Offense, I think, athletically-wise, are a little bit ahead of defenses. So you got to find a guy that fits that mold. And sometimes you may have a unique guy in that situation, but I think he's looking for a guy who's kind of a cross between a safety and a linebacker. And, LeVon, talking about trying to find a guy, everyone's trying to find a guy that can cover Rob Gronkowski. We've seen great players like Eric Berry not be able to do that. You seem like the kind of guy that could have done that. Right? You're a big guy that could match up with him. You were a big guy that could run. It seems like you would be the guy everyone's trying to find, right? Well, you know, maybe the 260 version, if you could find that guy. Uh, I think that I think that guy's really hard to find. And I think also, you know, I, I think they don't I, – I think tight ends are really not jammed on the line of scrimmage uh, The linebackers that we had, with, especially Jason Gilden, and, you know, of course, Kevin and, and Greg and Carlos, they did a good job of really getting a hand on that tight end. And I know it was a little different because the tight end wasn't the main target, but, I, you know, I cover guys like uh, Ben Coach. I cover guys like Shannon Sharp. And those guys were the, uh, they were the, they were the two guys that were, can run, uh, big guys. And so I could cover those guys. So I, I think physical, physically, I can get with them and I can run down the field with them. I think now it's such a mismatch because you got guys that are like basketball players. They're like power forwards and they're playing against the typical safety or 
the typical linebacker, and I think nowadays you got to change that position. That position has got to uh, evolve in some kind of way. So I, I think I, I think those guys that are kind of typical are going to have a tough time covering the tight ends that you're seeing being produced right now. To your point, Levon, and something that you know, Bob and I talk about this often, and it drives my father crazy, what you talked about right mm-hmm. there is guys like Gronk getting a free release off the line of scrimmage. It, 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 it sort of makes us shake our head. How? Why does that happen? Why would you not jam him and at least knock him off the route and not, knock the timing off a little bit? But when you let a guy like that get a free release, it just makes it, it seems to me like it would make it that much harder to try to cover him because he is so big. Yeah, I think it makes it extremely difficult to cover a guy, especially when that guy knows exactly where he's going. And it's a timing thing, and you're not jamming him. Uh, I think it's kind of ridiculous. I think when you got a player like that, you have to jam him. You have to get physical with him. I, I don't know that uh, the, the NFL is more offensive-driven. It's always been that way. But I, I think you got to play physical. you got to make the referees make those calls. And you got to give him uh, a tough day. you got to make him pay the price for trying to catch the ball and get off a lot of scrimmage. I don't. I really don't understand uh, why it's not that way. I know that, honestly, what I saw when I was coaching, that technique over the tight end is just lost. The guys don't even, you know, they're over the tight end, and they're looking in the backfield because they want to get a sack or rush the passer. So a lot of times these guys are not even keying the tight end, so he's getting a free release. But I don't really understand that. I think sometimes everybody's trying to be a guru, and I think sometimes defense can be a little simpler and really work. So I can't really answer your question. I don't know why defensive coordinators don't really emphasize doing that. Or if they emphasize doing that, the players are definitely not doing that. So it's a little little monkey wrench in the communication that's going on between defensive coordinators, and the guys that are on the field. LeVon, we've heard that Keith Butler is going to also take on not only the defensive coordinator role, which he's had, but he's also going to be coaching the linebackers. Can you do both of those things successfully? It seems like a lot to ask a guy to do both of those roles. Uh, I, I tend to lean to it. It's a lot to ask a guy to do that. Uh, I really do because you got you 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 got to worry about schemes. You got to worry about uh, pass combinations, passing concepts, the run game. You got a lot for a defensive coordinator, and that's normally why in the NFL you don't see defensive coordinators being the position coach either. I think it's tough. Uh, I'm not saying that he can't do it, but I think it's tough. I think you need I think you need position guys. So you can focus in on really making great calls and, and and really having some help. To be honest with you, it's a it's a huge job. I I, I really uh, all my time in the NFL, I've never really seen that where a defensive coordinator is going to also be a position coach. I think it's a little tough, but um, if that's the way they want to go, then so be it. Bob, one more for um, from uh, or for Levon before we let him go. Sure, uh, Levon. We we talked about your new position and uh, hearing you talk about linebackers as eloquently as you do. I was just wondering, uh, will, do you think you ever might reconsider about coaching down the road? Is that something uh, that you're going to put off for now, or do you still have that interest? Uh, I think it's always in me to be quite honest with you, but. I am happy with what I'm doing. I really like it. The culture is great. Uh, the people are great. And, you know, um, it's a bigger purpose than myself. So I like the job. I really do like the job. But I think if so, if a team calls, I, I have to be, you know, I, I think I have to consider it. Mm-hmm. I, I really do. So, uh, you know, yeah, I think that coaching thing is always there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still doing football camps and, helping young people out. So, you know, I, I am getting my coaching fixed 
But I really believe that, you know, if an opportunity is open, yeah, why, you know, why not consider it? So, but I, I think, like, going back, I, I think trying to coach the linebackers and trying to also coach the defense is tough. I, I did it myself when I was coaching at, uh, I was coaching in college. And it's, a, it's tough duty. It really is tough duty. So, uh, that'll be interesting to see what happens. LeVon, before we let you go, we got to get your pick for uh, Sunday. Who do you like, Patriots or Rams? Oh, man. You want to put me on the spot here. You know, I, I know a lot of people are going with the Patriots, and I can understand why. Uh, very well coach. They do a tre- tremendous job at the quarterback position, which is the most important position in the world, but – I think the Rams are going to play aggressive, and I think they're going to get out of it. And I think that I think that they got a definite shot. So I'm just going to go away from the crowd at this point in time, and I'm going to go with the Rams on this one. I don't ask me to score because I don't know it, but it's one game. It's one game. You don't have to be the greatest during the season. It's just that one game where you got to ball out. And I, I think that if, when you put it that way, then, yeah, you got an opportunity. You know, forget about their genius and they do this and they do that. Man, you got to play your butt off and you got to take it to them. I always believe that when a team supposed to be uh, better, you, 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 the other team, you got to be more aggressive. And I feel that there's a thing called law of momentum. And for the Patriots, things are probably in their favor. But I think as the Los Angeles Rams, you have to take that away from them. And the only way you do that is you become super, super aggressive, and they have to kill you to beat you. That's how I look at it. So I think they I have love a chance. I mean, do, but does the, I mean, do the Rams do? I don't know. Uh, so they got to come out there. They just got to they just got to swing. They got to punch, and they just got to be determined that they're not going to lose. If they got that mindset, then they're going to be just fine. So I'm gonna pick the Rams. I'm gonna go against some um, conventional thinking. I'm gonna go against what the crowd is saying and go with the Rams because I think they do have the talent to win. Um, and if uh, I think that they, especially if they put to lead on elements, I, I think they got a, a super chance to win. And, and they can put some pressure on Tom Brady. They got a chance. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I got the Rams, too. So Thank you. I love it. All right. <laughs> That's fantastic. LeVon, let our listeners know how they can stay up to date with all the great things you're doing and follow you online and on social media. Oh, yeah. Well, we got to talk to a lot of Hall of Fame on every day for Facebook, Twitter, uh, that you can reach us at. Uh, my personal email, I mean, Twitter is 44 underscore Kirkland, so you can reach me there. I'm also, I also have a coaches page, um, on Facebook, and I have, uh, a Facebook page, and basically a lot of times I'm really, um, doing things for the Hall of Fame, so I'm very excited about what we're doing. It's, it's a lot of fun thus far, and you know, we're, we're changing lives through football. I think football is one of our last rituals. Uh, I think it teaches a lot about life. It gives you some incredible soft skills that you can take into the workplace. So that's what we're trying to provide. We're trying to get our athletes at a very young age and raise them up in the right way. Mentoring that I might not have, it's time for us to give that back and really teach them some real life skills. And they can take that on. And they can be successful no matter what they do. Go to college, don't go to college, military, uh, go to the NFL. Um, we're going to support them for their whole life. And that's what I like about it. It's great stuff, LeVon. And we can't thank you enough for sharing your stories and your insights with us and being a part of the show as often as you have. That's why you're uh, in our guest hall of fame. We thank you very much for your time tonight. And we uh, are already looking forward to the next time we get to spend some time with you. Uh, well, you know, I always appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for having me. God bless, man, and uh, have a great time watching the Super Bowl, okay? Please do the same. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Levon. Take care. All the best to right. you and your family, Yvonne. We'll catch up soon. All right.
Thank you very much. Good night. That is the great LeVon Kirkland. And, Bob, you know, you want to talk about a guy who was one of the most supremely talented athletes as a linebacker, a guy that was, you know, bigger than most linebackers but had the speed, you know, to go along with, you know, any of the fastest guys in the in the, uh, in the the linebacking core that you could possibly find. That's why I say LeVon Kirkland is the guy that I think if you're going to stop Gronk, who do you need and what are you looking for in the guy that can do that? and match up with a guy like Gronk, I think it's LeVon Kirkland. I think he's the prototype. That's a good point, Chris. I mean, he had the size. I mean, again, he played at 270. And, uh, he, again, you hear him uh, always say, be aggressive, got to be aggressive, get in their face, whatever you got to do. Uh, whatever else everybody else has done hasn't worked. So uh, I would listen to LeVon. Always so fun talking to him, Chris. He, uh, he will celebrate his 50th birthday in two weeks, so uh, we, uh, we're we honored every time he decides to come on. Uh, one of our favorites, for sure. Yes, he is. And again, as we've said many, uh, you know, every time he's come on the show, and I want to repeat it here, LeVon Kirkland was guest number one on episode number one with us on the show back in September of 2011. And uh, one of the great things about LeVon Kirkland and having agreed to do that, he's coming on a show, obviously, that he'd never heard of, with two host that he never heard of and he did it and he was great and uh, he's been great ever since so we owe a lot to uh to levon kirkland and thanks to him for uh joining us again tonight all right bob and i will come back we'll turn on our thursday night tailgate spotlight on the positive and we're going to do that on the other side of these words about our great friends at the salt creek golf retreat and dp quality foods 